So all through my education, I studied lots of science and mathematical based subjects. Um, but through university, I realized that I really wanted to feel like I was doing something worthwhile and, and helpful um, rather than just doing any old career that only benefits kind of myself and a few small sectors of industry. So after I did my undergrad engineering degree, um, I decided that I wanted to stay in a technical field, but also do something that was going to help the wider world and realised that trying to fight climate change was, was a really sensible route to take. And so from there, I studied um, low carbon building design uh, as a master's subject and carried on through into uh, a career in reducing uh, carbon emissions for all kinds of organisations and ended up where I am now. Um, yeah, I, outside of work, I really enjoy making things. Um, so I've bored people to tears talking about building a, a new shed at home, but that's become my, my new happy place where I can make a mess and make things usually out of wood, um, but just uh, follow my weird and wonderful um, random projects um, in my own time, in my own space. Um, so there's a, a few things that set Discerner apart from, from other organisations in this industry. Um, firstly, we're fiercely independent and impartial. So that means we don't make things particularly easy for ourselves. Um, Whereas it could be very tempting to partner with the likes of certain energy suppliers um, or certain products and tools or services um, around the industry and perhaps um, profit from selling certain um, services to other clients. We, we try and maintain a completely independent um, point of view um, within the industry and so the advice that we give our clients can be relied upon um, there's no there's no ulterior motive in, uh, in us giving advice for a certain course of action um, and without that independence we wouldn't be able to we wouldn't be able to demonstrate that in the same way um, so that gives us a, a kind of competitive edge over a lot of organizations that don't stick quite so firmly to that um, to that independence um, the other way that we maintain some kind of competitive edge is constantly evolving our knowledge and our services to meet the needs of the low carbon economy. Um, and, and the way we do that is by having a team of people that are absolutely passionate in what we do. And so outside of work and with inside work, we're, uh, we're always discussing and learning new ways to decarbonize, um, any changes in the industry that are going on in terms of technology or legislation or just general attitudes. Um, we're always trying to understand what's going on and share that. Um, so I've fallen in love with loads of TV shows. Um, I watch almost exclusively comedy shows and so I'm a big fan of things like Parks and Rec. I, um, I identify very strongly with Ron Swanson. Um, and other similar shows like Brooklyn Nine-Nine and uh, The Office, things like that. But I'm also a big fan of British comedy and I was gonna say British comedy like Father Ted, but, but that's Irish. Um, so the IT crowd, Father Ted, um, older stuff like Faulty Towers and Monty Python as well. Um, um, yeah, I think pretty much exclusively comedy. Um, so, from what we've seen in recent years, I think 
a lot of what happens in, in the near future with sustainability um, and our industry in general, it's going to be driven by organisations themselves and um, not necessarily rely on sort of government guidance and legislation. Um, there's there's a lot of demand and it, um, from the the clients and customers of businesses for them to demonstrate that they're doing something to reduce their environmental impact, and so. A lot of organisations that want to procure certain goods and services, they're actually imposing requirements for their suppliers to have a, a net zero commitment um, and a plan for delivering it. And so there's, um, there's more and more need generally for a sustainable industry. Um, and things like the products and services that businesses can offer, they're increasingly coming um, hand in hand with a statement or a certificate to demonstrate the impact that that, that has on the environment. Um, and so the demand for services such as life cycle assessment, um, environmental product declarations, um, wider decarbonisation support for businesses that's growing all the time and it's it does seem to be driven by the market itself.